Hey, Mike McGrady. First of all, I want to say welcome to 2015. And uh, today, I want to. We're going to do a little video on doing hardwood cuttings. This is something that you could do in the dead of winter. I've already done thousands of them, and this, you know. Um, January through February, just about anywhere where you're at. This works really great. Um, let's go in and have a chat with the donkeys and then we'll, we'll do the cuttings. Alright, for those of you that may be new to our list, these are our two miniature donkeys. This guy here is Fergus and this is Finnegan. They're about a year and a half old, so they're pretty well full grown for miniature donkeys. Anyway, you know, I, I, I kind of give you an idea of what we're planning for 2015 here at Mike'sBackyardNursery.com. We're going to take you step by step through the entire year with all kinds of gardening information, plant propagation information, anything that uh, is going to help you become a better gardener at home. We're going to teach you every kind of plant propagation technique that we know, everything that we use here in the nursery, and of course. We're going to involve these characters as much as we can because they're part of what we do here every day. You guys want a cracker? So anyway, it's January. Most people are cooped up in the house. But today I'm going to show you how... Here, Fergus, you want a cracker, buddy? Today I'm going to show you how to take what looks like a stick and, and just cut it up, stick it in the ground, and actually get roots. This is actually something that works really well. You can do it with all kinds of flowering shrubs. Today we're going to do purple sand cherry. Um, I've already done a bunch of stuff. I'll show you those. But so anyway, I'll show you you know how we take the cuttings, what we do with them, and then how easy it is to actually get them to root. So let's wander back out and we'll take a look at that and um, go from there. All right, now what I have here, this is a purple sand cherry. It doesn't look like much right now, dead of winter. But what I do is I let these things grow and I don't trim them at all during the growing season because my intention is to get hardwood cuttings during the winter. So basically I come through here and I'm just going to start grabbing these canes is what we call this when you're collecting hardwood cuttings. i got a cord going through here. I've been building an outhouse. Now, as you can see, I've cut that thing down to pretty much a stump, but this is all new growth from one year. So that next year, what that thing's going to do is it's going to flush out and put actually put on more canes than it had this year. So if you look at this particular plant, you see we cut it last year. It was cut here and here, and then it put on all this new growth from down below. So. Um, this really forces them to get nice and full. So let's go inside, we'll make a few cuttings, and then I'll show you what to do with them. All right, now this is the cane that I collected, purple sand cherry. Now you can do this with, with almost any kind of flowering shrub. You know, you have nothing to lose to try. So basically, though, when you're doing a hardwood cutting, what you want to do is you look at these little bumps on the stem. These are leaf nodes or bud unions and this is where you're going to get new branches next year. First you're going to get a leaf and then a branch is going to appear there. So when you're doing a hardwood cutting it's important that you cut right below the, the node but not into it. And then on the top of the cutting I'll do this one. Now on the top of the cutting I cut about an inch above the last node. So what happens is now when you're working with the cutting this piece right here is going to actually protect these two buds so you don't knock the buds off or anything like that. This tip will die back, but that also helps you when you're out there sticking the cuttings. If you drop your bundle, you'll know which is top and bottom because the dead space on top is the top of the cutting and then the cut right below this node right here, that's the bottom of the cutting. So I'll do so when I made the cut, I actually made this cut right below a node where I wanted it. So then I'm going to make another cut right there. So I, I've got a little bit of a dead space there, but I also have a, a right, I cut right below that particular bud. So I'll make a few of these. So these things are probably five or six inches long. Um, I usually, you know, the hardwood cutting, you're usually working with something that's a little bit longer than a softwood cutting. And that's a little too long, so I'm just going to whack the top of it off. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I got six cuttings. 
out of that you can see the sand tray the the wood is a little bit purple so again I'm kind of whoops I got him upside down see that's why it's when you that helps a lot when you have that when you make that cut so you can tell top to bottom so basically once you have them you made your cuttings that's all there is to it you know if you want you can wound them on the side this is something that I almost never do because I have pretty good success without it so but when you wound a cutting you're just going to cut because what happens is with a plant see that's a that's a wound there that you know so that can help normally I don't do it because it's not necessary on most things but when a plant is wounded just like when you make this cut or you cut here the, just like your human body when you break a bone the body develops some callus around that break then heals itself well plants will do the same thing before these things root they're going to develop some callus there and then they're going to root so once I have my cuttings made like that then I'm going to dip them in my rooting compound this is usually about a like a six second dip so you just count, you know, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, on up to six seconds, and uh, that's all there is to it. A lot of times I will make up hundreds of cuttings. I'll dip them, make up 25 or 30, dip them, and then lay them on a the table. Rooting compound, you, you don't have to have it. Chances are you'll have success without it. All it really does is, in, is it, it enhances, increases your chances of success. So this is dip and grow. The brand doesn't matter, it doesn't really matter whether you use a, a liquid or a powder, they all work. Many cuttings will root without it, so you know, don't get caught up in details. Many times I've done hardwood cuttings with no rooting compound at all, I simply made my cuttings like that. Now, to stick these cuttings, all I'm going to do is take them outside and we'll stick them in the sand. I have a bed of sand out there, but I, you can stick them, you can just make a slice in the ground and stick them right in your, uh, in your garden, you can make that um, plant them about that far apart or you can you know I put them in containers let's go outside and I'll show you all right now to stick your cuttings all you have to do and actually this sand is a little bit frozen but not enough to be concerned about um, so I, I make a cut in there and then I'm going to simply stick these things in usually I get at least one two or three buds below ground you can see I'm sticking them about an inch apart. Um, normally I don't stick them more than two inches, but if you do, it's not the end of the world. And then just kind of pat that back down. That's it. I mean, that's all there is to it. Um, keep them watered. That sand right now is kind of dry, so I'll, I'll you know keep that watered. If they get this January, they're going to be out here all winter. Um, come spring, then what I'll do is water them you know once a day or just a little bit of spritzing so that they they're because of what's going to happen is they're going to leaf out as they are making roots so these things because they're hardwood cuttings are going to be very slow to root so they'll start leafing out the end of April but they probably won't be rooted enough to take out of there and pot up until like you know the end of June or even into July I don't really push the process now these are the ones that I've done so far this winter and to give you an idea, my hardwood cuttings start right here. These are some red twig dogwood. This is Annabelle hydrangea. Uh, there's some weeping pussy willow. There's dappled willow in here. Blushing bride, uh, Rosa Sharon. Some more sand cherry. Uh, Ruby, Rosa Sharon. More sand cherry, double red Rosa Sharon. So you can see I did a bunch of things in there. Now over here I'll show you the, some of the ones that we did last winter. Last winter um, we did, th these are grape cuttings, you can do grapes the same way. That's some Linwood Gold for Scythia back there. There's two different kinds of willows right here. This is, uh, these are Golden Curls Willow. Uh, you can see how much these, this is the cutting, so they put on probably eight or ten inches of growth and actually I've already trimmed these during the summer I went through here and cut the tops off on some of these because they were getting a little bit too tall so what I when I cut them that forced them to break more buds we didn't pot these up because we just didn't have the room we, we had so many so these things have been in these containers for just about 12 months now 
So this is just a flat. Last year we did them in potting soil. We did a bunch of them in plastic containers like this. We used potting soil because that was the only thing that we could get our hands on last winter that wasn't frozen solid. So again, uh, and you can see I don't I don't offer them any special protection. I mean, last winter it was 15 below. This year it's been, we've had some pretty mild weather. It got down to about 10 or 15 degrees, you know, the last couple of days at night. But these uh, Golden Curls Willow, as soon as spring breaks, we're going to pot these things up and get them out, you know, ready to sell. So it's an easy process. Uh, you can do it with evergreens. It's a slow process. But like I told you, we're going we're gonna to kind of give you a play-by-play -play as the year goes on. And we're going to show you all kinds of different ways to propagate plants. So kind of hang in there with us. We've got a lot of stuff planned for 2015. And, you know, I appreciate you being on the list. And I'm wishing you the, the absolute best for this coming year. So I'm Mike McGrory from Mike's Backyard Nursery.